In today's video, we're going to be talking about building management systems, design, or data centers. This also applies to hospitals or any other mission critical facility or business critical facility. And I made a point there of actually adding business critical on the end of that because as BMS engineers or mechanical contractors or mechanical consultants, whenever we hear the word data center, our ears prick up and we know that we need to put a special focus on this project and think about a robust, resilient design. But we don't seem to have that thought process about business critical facilities. You know, office buildings that have a component, a floor, or a, a part of a floor that has a very critical part of their business. That if, it, if the air conditioning fails or the control system fails, it affects their business. And we need to be a bit more aware of this. So in today's video, we're gonna to touch on what is N plus one. So we often hear about mechanical N plus one designs, electrical N plus one, and we'll touch on what that means. And I will show you a very easy way to satisfy the requirement to provide an N plus one building management system. So what is N plus one? So if you read a mechanical specification, it'll talk about N plus one chillers and pumps and N plus one mechanical distribution boards and all these sort of things. It's quite a simple thing. If the mechanical consultant has um, you know, designed the system and realized that we need two chillers to satisfy the load, it's the two chillers, which is the design, that's the N, so it's N plus one, so we need three chillers. If we need two cooling towers, plus one, we need three cooling towers. If we have one mechanical distribution board, is for the design, N plus one, we need two mechanical distribution boards. If we have one UPS, we need two. If we have two generators, we need three. So when I've been engaged to do a review of a data center control system that's failed like, you know, maybe twice in five years, which isn't much, but in data center land, that's very bad. Um, and I walk into the plant room, and it's, a, it's an N plus one design, and I walk in the plant room, I'll see, you know, two chillers plus one, and one mech board plus one, and cooling towers, and maybe there's eight crack units, you know, plus two, um, and automatic transfer switches for the power, you know, there might be a, um, you know, there might be a dual redundant ring of chill water pipe work, so there's like ring A and ring B, so they could shut off, you know, one ring if they're doing maintenance or adding, you know, pipe work modifications in the future. As I walk through the plant room and seeing all these things, in the corner down there, I see this one big BMS control panel with 10 controllers in it, which is N plus zero. So whenever I see that, I just know that we don't have an N plus one BMS here. We have a, a what I normally call it, just a standard office BMS, commercial office BMS within this N plus one data center. And I think if you read the mechanical specification, what happens in my opinion, some of the time generalizing here, um, you'll read through this mechanical specification, there's this N plus one everywhere in there. And you get to page 200, which is the BMS section now, and you read those words, and those words are the same words for a commercial office BMS. Because I think in a lot of consultancies or they don't have a dedicated mission critical department they just you know the mechanical engineer you know really smart mechanical engineers work in the design but either doesn't know much about the control system or doesn't have time to do the control system and that's where this whole thing starts to fall apart because and for mechanical consultants you know if the bms contractor reads through it gets to page 200 and sees like oh hang on a sec like that's not going to work for a data center they will not off their own back, gonna allow for more stuff that's not specified. They're not gonna allow for more control panels, they're not gonna allow for duty standby bypass control valves and actuators. They're not gonna allow for you know, two pressure transmitters rather than one pressure transmitter. If they do that, they won't win the job, they won't pay wages, and they'll have to shut up shop. So it's gotta be in there. If you don't write the words in there, we're not gonna have a reliable BMS system. And that's why I think we often get N plus one mechanical electrical and you know N plus zero BMS. Okay, so how do we do an N plus one BMS system? Because this has become, and actually you guys are gonna 
be shocked at how easy this is. But it's become very complicated because what I think is happening is I think the BMS industry, when it gets to reliability projects, is trying to copy the PLC industry, programmable logic controllers. So the PLC systems that are controlling manufacturing lines um, and process control systems, they have been developed from the ground up to be resilient, like redundant control systems. So they would have, you know, hot standby processes. It's built like that. So if the if the duty processor fails, the hot standby processor takes over. It just works. That's how it's designed to work. So I think I sometimes see BMS companies trying to copy that. So we'll have, you know, um, duty standby BMS network controllers, maybe some sort of a watchdog timer between the two, and you know, you know, completely replicated all the database and uh, all the the staging program. It's all replicated in there. So if the the duty network controller fails, we try and change over to the standby network controller. You know, maybe even try and switch the RS485 sub networks across with some relays even. Uh, and then we might have a whole lot of these input output modules. We're trying to double them up. Super duper complicated because our systems are not designed to do that from the ground up. And um, it gets so complicated that I think it becomes unreliable. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to follow Mechanical's N plus one design. Two chillers plus one. So we've got our big BMS control panel. We distribute the controllers. Does that sound familiar? We take those three chiller controllers out of the panel and we put each one into its own box. So in the plant room, there's a box with chiller one controller. This far away from it, on the wall, not on the chiller because it might be outside in the rain, this far away is the second control panel and the third control panel. We have three control panels there. And the reason why I've been doing this for a few years now, there's two reasons. The first one is when chiller two fails on a compressor, we rotate it out and we put the standby chiller in, right? So we've got, this, we've got a spare one there. And now we have broken out our control panels to follow or mimic the three chillers. So on chiller two, if we lose the BMS controller or the BMS temperature sensor or a magnetic flow meter or the bypass valve that's on that controller or the HLI to the pump or the chiller, if we lose something in the BMS, we rotate the whole set out, the whole thing, the whole chiller, the pump, the whole thing rotates out and we bring the standby whole chiller in, the pump, everything, the control panel, everything. So all we did there was we didn't try and develop an N plus one BMS system with you know, standby processes and controllers and duplicated IO modules, we didn't do any of that. All we did was we broke up our control panel into smaller control panels that aligned with mechanicals N plus one configuration of equipment. So like if something goes wrong, just even though the chill is fine, the chill is fine, the pump's fine, rotate that whole thing out and bring a whole healthy set in. Couple the whole thing as a combined unit. That was the first reason why I did that with the panels. The second reason was after um, reviewing a few data center control system issues and talking to people and writing up a report and blah, 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 I came to the conclusion, in my opinion, this is not a fact, so don't repeat this. My personal opinion is that mostly, or at least a lot of, data center control system issues, BMS issues, are related to a human error. Like how often does a BMS controller fail? Like they don't fail, they never fail those things. So if it's properly installed, a commission, et cetera, et cetera, it's usually a human that causes the failure. And I've seen this a few times, so I'm not just sort of making this up. One, one, the last one I saw a year or two ago was um, the you know, a mechanical service technician came to site to do maintenance on a pump or something like that or whatever it was. And uh, isolated, you know, turned the isolator off and did the work and then you know, turned the handoff order switch to off. And then when he was finished, he took the order switch, like the handoff order switch back to auto, but forgot to um, turn the isolator back on. And we, we weren't monitoring the isolator position on that data center. But nothing was, everything was fine because the other chillers were running. And then like a week later, it rotated to a different chiller. And then a week later, it rotated to this chiller and the pump didn't start. We had a mismatch. So we tried to rotate back to the previous set. And for some reason, there was an anti-recycle timer, whatever it was, that one didn't start. 
and we lost conditions. Like a huge problem, and it was just because we forgot to put the power back on the VSD. There was a human error. Another one I saw um, was there was a network switch and they didn't know what it was. So the BMS company took their laptop and plugged into the network switch and was just pinging around trying to work out what it was. So they had a laptop and patch lead. When they finished, the guy just made a mistake and he took the patch lead and stuck it back into the network switch. So it was in the switch and then back into the same switch. That created a loop. The whole network stopped and everything turned off. It was a huge problem. He sort of walked off, didn't even realize. And, and that actual one problem, it actually kicked off, and I'm not joking, that kicked off like three or four years worth of data center refurbishment projects on that project. We pulled it, we upgraded the PLC system, and then a year later we pulled the thing out, the whole thing, and new cooling towers, it was actually yeah, new chillers, no more cooling towers, air cooled, like changed the whole, new crack units. That one thing just initiated a big piece of work. It was a human error. So when you have the three boxes, the service technician or whoever it is, is only in one box inside there. So if they're changing the software in there or doing a download or bringing a new sensor into it and fitting it off, whatever it is, or you know, knocks over their coffee cup in there, probably wouldn't happen, just you know, anything can happen. Um, the issue is just there. It's not like the whole control panel, you make a mistake and the circuit breaker trips, the whole thing goes Poof. Like, it's not that bad. So what I was trying to do there was, one, break the panels out, just follow mechanicals M plus one. Two was we're reducing the risk of human error dropping the whole panel out. Uh, also what I started doing was I stopped putting power sockets in those panels. So the tech can't plug his laptop into this panel. I would put a power socket somewhere else, but not in this panel. I don't wanna make it easy for the BMS tech to be in the panel doing something and powering up his laptop. Um, also started you know, the relays in there, you know, that little mechanical little flap that you can lift up and override the relay on. Stop providing those relay heads. Because you know what happens is we're doing commissioning on a new install and the fire alarm system's not ready yet. So we turn all these little relays on, get the, you know, the AHUs running that are doing the, the pressurization in the data hall, whatever it is, and we're running, but we forgot to take the little latch off. You know, seven years later, something happens, those relays don't drop out. Start removing those relays. So another thing actually was is quite interesting now that I'm actually thinking through this, something to think about. You know when you have these uh, eight standby crack units in the hall, then we have two standby crack units. The default plan is to have a board and our controllers and we have digital outputs going out to all 10 of these crack units and we run eight of them. So once a week we rotate one out, rotate one in, you know, once a week we do this. And if one fails, we rotate it out and bring a standby unit in. To me, that's a, that box is obviously a huge single point of failure. So the first job I did is I said, look, that's, let's break that out into two panels. So every second crack unit, not all the ones on this half, every second one was controlled from this controller and the, the alternating ones were from this controller. But still, if I lost the panel, I still lost half the hall. So, then I was thinking, so what I do now is I go to the mechanical consultant and say, hey, listen here, let's remove that control panel in the bin. No cables, nothing. The BMS does not start and stop the crack units. The BMS does not do duty rotation, none of that. Walk into the hall and go and turn on, on the LCD, the liquid crystal display on each crack unit. Just turn them all on, all of them. The whole thing, they're all on. Well, you need eight to run. So what will happen is there's 10 running, they'll all just back off. The compressors will back off a bit and the cooling valves will close off a little bit if, if you have cooling ones or condenser or whatever it is. And they'll just back off, start, they're all running. If that crack in the corner there fails, what will happen is the cracks on either side of it, their temperature sensors detect that, hey, it's getting a bit warm here. They'll just load up and meet the load. So you have this arrangement where they're all running. If one fails, it sort of automatically loads up. There's no requirement for the building management system to intervene. So we've completely reduced that point of failure. So why I mentioned that is, when you're looking at doing a data center design for a control system, you know, think about you know, breaking up the panels to smaller pieces and, and following mechanicals M plus one. Think about reducing the things in the panel that someone might touch um, or fill around with. And the third thing is, if you can't mitigate the risk, 
just remove the risk completely. Remove it. Still have a network cable that goes to each one of these crack units, still monitor them. Still have, you know, 20 points per crack on the graphics, but I just don't think that it's worth the increased risk by starting and stopping the cracks via the BMS. That's that. Now, uh, next week, if we continue with this, we'll talk about um, dual redundant 24 volt power supplies. Maybe we'll talk about um, what do you do about the instrumentation. And then just my thought process when I'm designing a, a mission critical control system, how does my thought process work? We'll do that next week unless I see something else on site that's exciting and we end up changing the, the plan. Because that last month of distributed power and controls, just like halfway through, I wanted to move on, um, but yeah, it was started something we couldn't finish. So right guys, I hope you got some value out of that and you've got a few ideas for things to try and I'll see you next week.